Good morning, children. Today we'll be starting section two, properties of water. But in this video, you should be able to discuss the properties of water. Differentiate between solutions and suspensions. Describe polarity and hydrogen bonding. Uh, you should also know all these key terms. If you take screenshots so you have them, that'd be great. Um, part two of this video, which will come next, we'll talk about um, acids, bases, and the pH scale. So first off, uh, section two is all about water. Uh, and the water molecule is really just a great molecule. Um, without it, we would not be here. Life wouldn't exist on Earth. Um, it's the only thing that surrounds about 70% of the Earth uh, in liquid form. So not much else occurs that naturally in liquid form, like we have here in the oceans. Um, like we said, everything on Earth depends on it. Even these guys, these little scorpions that live in the deserts, they need water. And even my favorite, my spirit animal, the narwhal, uh, obviously lives in water, thrives in water. Yes, they are real. So when we talk about the water molecule, the chemical formula is H2O. So we have two hydrogens, one oxygen. Um, now if you remember, atomic number for oxygen is eight, so it has eight protons. Atomic number for hydrogen is one, so it has one proton, but since there's two of them, we have two. So we have a total of 10 protons, and we have 10 electrons. Now, if you remember, protons have a positive charge. All right, they're positive. Electrons have a negative. So water is neutral, right? Because it has 10 positives, 10 negatives. They cancel each other out. Um, but even though it's neutral, we do see another phenomenon of water, which gives it all these really cool characteristics that make it so essential for life. And this is called polarity. Okay, so a polar molecule is one that is neutral um, but has slightly uneven charges. So like we said on the last slide, water is neutral, 10 protons, 10 electrons. But as we talked about in the last video and we talked about in class, the electrons tend to hang out towards hydrogen more, or excuse me, towards oxygen. So these extra electrons are hanging out towards oxygen, which means oxygen is going to be a little bit negative. Uh, and since the hydrogens don't have those electrons, they're in a covalent bond in the middle here, right? And we can see that right here. Um, those electrons stay towards the oxygen, so it makes the hydrogens positive. Okay, so it's still neutral, 10 protons, 10 electrons, but the charges are spread out. We have a negative charge, slight negative up here on the oxygen, and two slight positives along the hydrogen. Now, this idea of polarity, or having a neutral molecule that has slightly opposite charges, or distant charges, uh, is going to bring us to a third type of bonding, we could call it, called hydrogen bonding. Now, this is not like the two types of bonds we talked last time. Um, so it's not like covalent or ionic, okay? Those types of bonds are way stronger to make molecules. Um, hydrogen bond we can think about being very similar to Van der Waals forces, right? Van der Waal, that guy that we talked about, um, which are, again are not bonds, they are attractions between molecules. So if we look here, right, we see the negative uh, side of the oxygen will line up with a positive of another hydrogen when we have multiple water molecules together. We see the same thing here. We see another H plus line up with another oxygen minus. We see an H plus runs up with this oxygen minus. H plus lines up with this oxygen minus. Uh, and all these interactions, which again are Van der Waals forces, uh, we can call hydrogen bonds. Okay, so hydrogen bonding is a weak type of bonding um, that is very similar to Van der Waals forces. You can almost think of it as the same. An attraction between two molecules. Um, and this hydrogen bonding, which is linked with that polarity, the idea of having uh, a neutral molecule but with slightly different charges on either end, is what going to allow for the really cool characteristics of water, which we'll talk about. Uh, and the first one is called cohesion and adhesion. Okay, so cohesion is an attraction between molecules of the same substance. So cohesion would be two water molecules attracted to each other, right? Because all these water molecules in a lake, in a pond, in a cup line up like this with these hydrogen bonds, there's a little bit of structure and they are slightly attracted. Like we said, the minus of the oxygen and the positive of the hydrogen, 
they are slightly attracted to one another. So cohesion is the attraction of the same substance, and adhesion is attraction of molecules of different substances. Uh, and a great example of cohesion would be like this water strider down here, this bug. He can glide on the water and not sink because all the water molecules underneath him are lining up in this structure, making hydrogen bonds. Um, and because they line up, they form a really tight-knit bond uh, that allows to, the, right, the hydrogen bond that allows that bug to fluid on the water without popping through. And that's really different than look at this grass here. And I'm sure if you've ever seen the grass after rain or leaves after rain or with some dew, you'll notice all these little water bubbles here, right? And these water bubbles stick to the leaf, right? Now the leaf uh, is made up of sugars, cellulose, okay, all different types of sugars that the plant makes. So it's, there is water in there, but it's not water, right? These little water bubbles stick to the leaf, to the cellulose of the leaf, right? It's adhesion because there's an attraction between different molecules, the water and then the leaf it's sticking to. The next property of water we're going to talk about is called heat capacity. Okay, and heat capacity refers to any molecule's ability to absorb energy or absorb heat and raise its temperature. Okay, so water is really cool because it has a very high heat capacity. Okay, so in other words, it takes a lot of energy to raise the temperature of water. Um, and again, this is due to that polarity and those hydrogen bonds that form between water molecules. Uh, and this is a little picture representation of water right before it's boiling. So for water to boil, these little water molecules in here start moving around really fast. You're bouncing around everywhere, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing around. And then eventually, once you get to boiling, right, when something's boiling, um, 100 degrees Celsius, eventually it's they're moving around so fast that these water molecules will basically leave and become airborne, okay? Um, so heat capacity is important for a couple of reasons, right? It takes a lot of energy to get these water molecules moving around really fast in order to leave the solution, right, and become airborne. Um, and this is really important for a lot of different reasons. If we think about when we go to the beach, right, if you go to the beach in April, the water is freezing, right? It's been cold all winter, so that water temperature is still really low. But if you notice, if you go to the beach around now, right, in September, the end of September, even into October, a lot of times the beach, the ocean temperature can be a lot warmer uh, even than the air or than it was earlier in the summer. And that's because water is a very high heat capacity. So it takes a lot of energy to raise the temperature of that water. It takes a lot of sun all summer long from June until August to raise the temperature of this water um, because of that hydrogen bonding and that polarity. And the last characteristic of uh, water we'll be talking about today are solutions and suspensions. Now solutions and suspensions are both mixtures. And a mixture is any material that's composed of at least one or more element or compound that is physically mixed together, okay? It is not a chemical bond, so it does not form uh, covalent or ionic bonds to create a new compound, right? It's only physical, which means we don't have to break bonds to separate. We could separate it with a filter. Um, or by drying something out, right, as a physical uh, mixture. And we have two types, solutions and suspensions. So a solution, right, is any type of mixture uh, that's spread evenly throughout, okay? So right here we have an example of a solution. Um, and we have two parts to that. We have the solvent, right, which is the liquid, which is doing the dissolving. And we have the solute, the stuff that's being dissolved. Some great examples of this are salt water, right? When you go to the ocean, you don't just find salt at the bottom mixed in with the sand, right? That salt is floating around uh, in solution with the water, right? The water is the solvent because it's dissolving the salt, which is the solute. The other mixture we're going to talk about is a suspension, okay? And a suspension is a mixture where it's not evenly spread out. Okay, and the solute, if you will, 
uh, will eventually fall out. So if we look here, right, we have a clean glass of water. And then we have this dirty glass with some dirt, um, some wood chips, stuff in there like that, right? If you notice, most of the stuff sank to the bottom. There's a little bit of dirt floating around here and a little bit of stuff on the top, right? This is a suspension because it's not even throughout, okay? A suspension will eventually settle out. It is not mixed in. It is not in solution. And again, the reason this can happen is because water uh, is a polar molecule and forms these hydrogen bonds. So it has that network uh, of water molecules lining up on top of each other, making a nice structure to hold things either in solution or in suspension. Uh, so that's it for now. We'll talk about the last characteristic of water, um, pH, uh, acids and bases in the next video. If you have any questions, feel free to tweet me at MrToto13 uh, or email me and uh, watch this video, review the key terms. If you have any questions, shoot them at me. Talk to you later.